guys, we're back here with another episode of the Devil's Story number three. I was doing peace, but then you went to three. Oh that's, shit! That's it's all good. 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 Peace to the three. Right. So we got uh, we got some good topics for you today. A lot more lighthearted than last week. A lot more lighthearted. Yes, we've gotten out some some frustrations about things we wanted to talk yeah. about. Uh, some some big uh, big big topic deals on the uh, last show, but this one a little bit more lighthearted. Yeah, there'll be less argument in this one. <laughs> Actually, you know what? There might be argument. Could in this be. One, you never know. But I don't think it'll be as. Is, uh, there could be like as bad as no, I wouldn't say bad. I just uh, we all know I was going to win, but you know it's whatever. Right. So, right. <laughs> yeah. So, first off, we got uh, the news coming out today that uh, they are enforcing that NFL players must stand for the national anthem. If not, they can stay in the locker room. <laughs> so, uh, this is a uh, this is some interesting stuff here because I can tell you when all this stuff was going on. Uh, years ago, with Colin Kaepernick, when they were doing all when all this stuff was going, where he was kneeling, and then every all these other players stepped in and were doing it, and uh, um, I think both sides of the issue here missed the point. Yep. Um, I think the I think that um, they were kneeling because of racially uh, injustices and thing like things like that with the police and and stuff like that, um, and then the the people who were the patriotic military supporter type people were like. Okay, that's disrespectful. That's not American of you. That's not very patriotic of you. Like, we're not. We're going to watch the NFL if you're not going to stand for the national anthem. It's just like this weird, like, paradox of things being like, this is crazy. No one's ever not stood for the national anthem. What is happening here? And it was a it was a big deal. Um, so I think, like I said, the the paradox of it being not specifically a paradox. The the issue with it being originally was. They were not. They were not standing, and they were kneeling, or just sitting in general right. for the injustices against racial uh, inequalities, especially stuff like police brutality and, and all kinds of things like that. That was the reasoning. And the other side was thinking, "Well, you're disrespecting our flag," and and all that. And and the and the people who were kneeling were like, they didn't care. They didn't, they didn't see it as disrespect. They saw it as a protest. So so it's kind of interesting to see where we're at now, where the league and all 32 teams have. Um, decided to make this a rule that you know you, you have to stand for the national anthem if you're now, not going to. You're gonna I sit in saw the just so we could get the logistics out of the way here, which we might have to look it up on one of our phones here in a minute. But I saw that they're putting that in place where they have to go out and they have to do that or whatever. Or will they get fined or will their team have some sort of ramifications against the team too? I don't know. I can't remember if it's specifically the team. Also, I know the player for sure is, is going to yeah. be fined. And the um, choice is they either, if they go out, they have to stand, or they choose, they don't, if they do not choose to go out, then they can stay in the locker room. Or right, whatever. they can okay. stay in the locker room. So um, the way I see it is um, the, the, the NFL themselves and also the TV stations uh, themselves, the commentators and such, I feel like um, they're going to try to keep this under wraps as much as possible. Yeah. So, so I feel like if someone's not out there, they're not going to mention it. They're not going to talk about it. They're not going to say who's there and who's not. And that right there is the number one problem of me, this whole entire thing, is the media exposure. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have cameras on Colin Kaepernick when this first started happening, it would not have escalated to this right. to this stature. Because you give the little tiny bit of TV time that you give to somebody who is a bench player whenever they started doing this and mm-hmm. didn't even get into the game – um, and you give that little bit of time, it doesn't even matter what happened in the game. Everybody was talking about what he did and then what these other players started doing. They weren't even talking about the game anymore. They were talking right. about these these protests or these, these you know, them not standing for the anthem and all this and that. Um, it goes a lot into what I, we were talking about, um, you know, last week with the shootings is, is the media coverage and how it glorifies these things and make it such a big deal that the only thing that comes out of what you're talking about is that issue yeah so it's not anything to do with football it's not anything to do with the game on the field it's all about oh well he didn't stand for the anthem that's what this is all about if you didn't even have cameras on him for anybody even recognize it in the first place this would have never been an issue i I just don't even feel like it would have been an issue you might have heard about it you know after the game and somebody be like hey i noticed you over there or whatever but instead all the can like all the cameras are on somebody like waiting to see if somebody's not going to be standing like for the anthem or something like that and i'm like it's just it's ridiculous, man. It's just it's so dumb. If I to me, I think if they wanted to make this a thing, they 
should have just I don't even know. Not I don't feel like it's not against the law to stand or not stand during the playing of a national anthem. Right. It's not a you're not going to get arrested doing it. I get that the people are going to say it's unpatriotic, but guess what? There's this thing called freedom of speech. Right. And freedom of speech doesn't play into the fact that if you're against something and you're using that as a platform to speak your mind, um, you know, in that form or fashion. Now people say, well, don't speak your mind in that way because it is disrespecting something that, you know, is the fabric of America and things like that. But it's not against the law. You, it, It's like I don't understand the people that come out and say – you know, well, how dare him be able to, you know, speak his mind and, and use this as a platform or whatever. Like, I am, I'm not for the getting behind Colin Kaepernick for any, any reason at all. Um, I get where they're coming from as far as the inequality things or whatever, because there obviously is that section of the country that is being affected right, by that right. for sure. Um, but the way that he did it and the way that the media and the coverage of these games exposed it, they made it into a bigger deal than it should have been. And then now you have all the other players that started doing it. They started getting behind Colin Kaepernick and, and doing everything that he started to do. And then it made it in snowball effect. And then the snowball yeah. effect continued to grow with the media coverage that it got. Um, to me, the, if you wanted to, to fix this as an issue, um, just if you're going to play the national anthem, don't even have the teams or anybody out there. Like, just if you could have, like, don't even have them out there. Like, then you don't even know who is kneeling, who's standing, who's doing what. Like, yeah. honestly, if you're going to do that, you're still you're still going to have the issue because now it's... Well, then it becomes the issue of you have the, the players that want to stand out there. And then it alienates half your team. And it alienates the, the, the players that are for it and that are against it. And then it causes dissension within the team, I think. And I think that's but that's still going to happen because there's still people that can stay in the locker room, right? And and I think that's why it's the option of if you don't want to stand, we're not going to have you kneeling on the side of the sidelines and to cause more coverage. I think the NFL just wants to wipe away with this whole situation because because and I, and I'll get into this and the issue I have with it when it comes to freedom of speech is to me the NFL looked at it as freedom of speech, uh, free thought, like your own personal opinion is not worth the money. So basically they're willing to come to this compromise, which some people would say it's a compromise. Yep. Some would say it's BS, right? But the compromise that there are, there is a very large portion of very loyal football fans that are very patriotic. Yeah. They're military supporters that right. are supporters of the flag. Very American. Um, uh, um, uh, it, some people would say baseball is America's sport. Football is America's sport. Right. And and I, I'm I'm sure people would disagree with that, but you have a very large portion of people that are watching football, and then they're like, I'm not going to watch football. I'm not going to pay for tickets. I'm not going to buy merchandise. And then they, to me, they saw it as your freedom of speech wasn't important enough because our money was more important. Right. And that's the issue I have. Yeah, with that's it. The, that's that's also the thing I was getting into. The biggest ploy to me is they're trying to get back all of those people. Right. They're trying to get back all of those you know loyal red, white, and blue bleeding for the country type of people back right. to watch their sport. But the problem is, is you're 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 focusing in on an issue, and it's going to continue to just get a closer and closer aimed in on that issue. But you're going to have you're still going to have people that aren't going to be a part of it. I get that they're not going to be out on the field, but what are you going to hear about? Oh. Blah blah blah. Stayed in the locker room because he's not, you know, didn't want to be a part of the national right. anthem because of this. Do you think or that'll that. be an issue? Do you think they'll really single out and say, "Well, uh, you know, Tom Brady decided not to go stand out there." They're like, gonna need. They're gonna need that. They're gonna need that. Um, it's just. It's the same. It is for for all newscasts. They're gonna try and find the way to to just make a story juicier. Yeah. So if they find out, oh my God, that guy didn't go out there or whatever, that's going to be the headline. I really feel like that could be the headline. Really? Regardless if they're out there or not, I still feel like, and that's it's just how the media covers it. This wouldn't have been an issue at all if it just wouldn't have been covered the way that it was originally. If they wouldn't have focused all the cameras on a backup quarterback who doesn't even deserve to be in the league just kneeling down during the national anthem. I just, I don't get it. To me, another part of it too is, I don't know, I'm just not very, like, I am very proud to live in America. I'm very proud for the opportunities and everything that I have. But I feel like a lot of those people, like, they are high and mighty, man. Like, they just, they, a lot of the, 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 the super Americana, like, all about the country or whatever, like, you know, defend it, blah, 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 blah. You couldn't and all say this the same for the players, though. What do you mean? 
well, I mean, you're being paid millions of dollars to just play a sport. True. So when it when it comes down to it is the issue was the freedom of speech for me originally. Mm-hmm. My other issue, which is kind of against what I go, what I'm saying is um, at the end of the day, you are doing a job. Mm-hmm. You are getting paid to do a job. But you're, take, but you're taking away their opportunity to to – to speak out in the way that they are not they're not they're not offending anybody in the in the in the they are in the, offending in people. the sense yeah. of in the sense of what are they doing they're kneeling on the ground did they shoot somebody in the face did no. they rape somebody did no they're simply kneeling down but all these people have to be high and mighty and right. stand above you to say how dare you do this how dare you do that because they might be powerless in some form of their life right. so they want to put it on somebody else they want to put it on this and that i could give it i could give a shit less if somebody kneels or stands yeah to me i don't care yeah i don't give a shit because I'm at the end of the day watch football. i'm yeah. watching football because that's what i came to watch i didn't right, came right. To, i didn't come to watch somebody kneel or sit down i came to beat somebody's ass at fantasy and watch some football that's what i want to watch right and at the end of the day i don't care if they kneel or stand i do not care i'm not saying that i am not you know, a proud American citizen. I'm not proud to be able to live in this country, but there are things that piss me off about this country. Right. And I feel like the people that kneel or the people that are speaking out are the same as the same thought as me as they have a platform to do that. They do be paid millions of dollars, but the camera's on them. Right. So maybe they use that as a platform right. to say, Hey, this is what, this is how I feel. This is blah, 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 blah. Um, it's not against any – well, it's against the rules now because, you know, the Nazi Football League is now all of a sudden making it an issue to be well, able I to think, say that you cannot yeah. do this and you cannot do you cannot do that when it's it's not it's you, it's not like they're burning a flag on the side think, of the field. I don't think it's as simple as that. I don't think it's as simple as saying it's like a Nazi, uh, like, organ, organized thing that are not – Are they like, not forcing them to do something They are that's not against the law or not against – They're giving them the option to stay in the locker room also. They're not saying you have to stand out there. They're saying if you don't want no, to No, they are. There. They're saying you have to stand on the field. They no. said if you go out there, you will be fined or you will, you will have punishment but, if you do not stand. If you kneel, you will get punishment. But if you stay in the locker room, you'll be fine. So they are saying that you cannot go onto the field. They are saying that if you're in the locker room, you get fined for not coming no, out? No, not in the locker room. I'm saying you'll get fined if you kneel on the field. No, no. So that's telling them what to do. Right. They're leaving them. They're giving them the option to not come out at all during True. the National Anthem. So that, to me, that, 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 makes, that is a compromise enough for me. If, if you don't – if you feel like – Enough, enough to where you you're you're gonna kneel or you, you or anything like that, and you right. don't want to be out there because you don't believe in in what's going on in our country. Then stay in the stay in the locker room. Like I get it. The, 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 this at the end of the day is also a business. This yeah. is a business, and they have to make their money. And and I will leave you. I will leave. I, this. It's funny. It's funny that it came also a week before Memorial Day too. How fitting yeah. is that? Yeah, it would be. It would be propaganda, bro. Propaganda. Um, Here's the thing. I'm going to leave you with this because this is an interesting fa- fact that I, I talked to somebody about this today with um, as well as um, if your dress code at work is you have to wear a tie and you show up to work four days in a row without a tie and then finally they say, hey, why are you not wearing a tie? And you're just like, screw it. Ties are stupid and I don't believe in them. And um, it's injustice against men because men shouldn't have to wear ties because it hurts when you have a tie on. It's really tight around your neck and you can't breathe. I mean, that's and, true. and then your that's company true. says, "Too bad. Our policy is you have to wear a tie, and if you don't want to wear a tie, you can find a job somewhere else." Like, I get that's it. True. None of these players are like, well, except for Colin Kaepernick because he's an idiot. But he was just like. But also, one of the they're not quitting. They're making a lot of money. So, but it, have it wearing wearing a tie at work doesn't play into legitimate rights that you have as a citizen. To be able to to be able to speak your mind and be able to protest and well, be able to say that it's not a legitimate because it's not it a legitimate protest in the sense because that they we're the work about will sports. set the work it's sets a legitimate their own protest rules. it's a legitimate protest that you have an issue with something that's going on and you want to protest against it and you're doing what the, you're, you I, think is right it's and, not even to mention uh, wait till uh, Odell Beckham Jr. scores a touchdown and lifts up his jersey and it just says fuck Trump on it <laughs> because how are you going to stop him from doing that oh shit well if that happens how are you going to stop him from doing that you're going to find him well guess what you can't take him out of the league because he's too damn good <laughs> like you know what I mean if he has a fuck Trump shirt on they might kick him out of the league but he, the players have done that I'm not saying that yeah. explicit I know. but what I'm saying is they're going to find a way right, right. to get it out Yeah. so why make this because that's what I'm just saying I'm just saying that it's I'm not trying to sit here and defend one way or another because I did. I, I Ka- Kaepernick to me was more. I all the focus went off of me. I'm a crybaby. Put 
the camera back on me. Right, right. And, you know, whether or not he was speaking, is he out there running freaking Martin Luther King rallies to get behind inequality things? No. He just simply he, kneeled on the... He is actually doing... He actually is doing... He's been doing a lot of uh, stuff for, like, racial injustice stuff. He's actually been protesting and, like, setting up funda- foundations and talking to people and setting up... He, now that he doesn't play football, He act, that's what he does. Right. He, he That's what he's doing for a living. He's just, that's his, he's, he's just a... He's literally just an activist on it now? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, he's an activist and he's been doing it for a while. And the To sport- me, the, the big thing, though, is did it not help set him up in that position to do all those things? Do you think he would be as successful maybe in that position of doing the you know in inequality things like that if he didn't try well, to make a statement in front of the camera as, it came as much to as a compromise could. with the kneeling okay yeah because originally he was sitting on the bench um the story came out i don't know if you've seen this or heard the story or not um where kaepernick met with a um a uh a military uh vet of some sort they right. uh he i guess he messaged colin kaepernick and said he was not cool with what he was doing but um he would he would like to have a conversation and a real uh, honest discourse about the situation. Kaepernick and this guy sat down and they had a conversation and they came to an agreement and they came to a thing and they agreed that maybe instead of sitting, that you could kneel. And the guy was like, "Okay, if you, if, this- you if you disagree with that, then maybe you should kneel instead of sit." And that's why that's why Kaepernick started kneeling. That's why because, I really think because him and a guy got I together really- and had a conversation, a real. I- I'm really starting to realize that the, the the like, these like Americana like qualities and things like that. Like, to me, I think somebody would go up to you know somebody and say like, well you know you don't have a, a flag up on the Fourth of July or you don't have this or that or you're not paying respect to this or this or that or just all the old school tradition type based things that I was talking about. You know, when it came to like gun related things or anything like that, that it's just like that's the way you have to be if you are not like. If you do not go that route, and if you do not full bloodedly like get behind and do this or that, like you're, it's the other side. Like I just right. feel like it's, and they always, same with religion. I feel like people that are are religious put themselves above everyone else mm-hmm. because that's the majority, yeah. and the majority of American people are like, okay, this is this is how you should do something, so right. do it my way, and that's basically how they're telling them to do. And, and like I said. I I don't feel like, to me, it's as as much as a disrespect to kneel during the national anthem, than it is anybody else thinking like thinking that it's that disrespectful to me. Right. I, to me, in my opinion, I just don't feel like it is. They're not burning a flag. They're not going out there and saying, you know, this is the worst country ever. Blah 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 blah. They have critical issues that they have that they speak out about. Um, it's an image. It's it an is. image, and, it it, and if you have other countries tuning in just to watch f- right. football from us, right. and they see that our our players are not standing for the na- national anthem, and it's an issue, like it's a real issue, then it makes other countries be like, "Shit, what's going on? Like, really, what's going on with this country? Like, what's the issue?" And I think it has a lot to do with image. Um, and, and and I agree with you on the point of it being, um, I, I I I could care less yeah. whether they kneel, stand, sit. Are in the locker room, standing out there. If they're standing on their heads, they're, I don't care. Right. Like I'm, I'm not against patriotism. I'm not against the, the military or the flag. Right. At the end of the day, I'm here to watch football. Right. And that's it. Like I, I don't. It's yep. not that important to me yep. specifically. But I get, I get the two sides of the the coin. I'm very, very freedom of speech. I've had a lot of issues with political correctness over the last couple of years of my life where I've dealt with situations where I was just speaking my mind. Right. I wasn't trying to be prejudiced or racist. Or, it became an issue. Or, uh, you know, sexist or fascist or any of those things. Right. And I was just speaking my mind and trying to have an honest conversation with someone about something. And they maybe got offended by me trying to have a conversation. I'm not running around saying racial slurs or being rude or anything like that. It's not – that's not the case. Is if you disagree with someone's opinion about something, that's your right as as as, an, as not only American but as your freedom of speech and your right to free thought in this country to say what you want. Right. And that's why I have an issue with that this. But at the same time, on the flip side of the coin, I see it as okay. Maybe they these players need to just suck it up and be grateful for what they have, the amount of money. But maybe being. the Americana people need to suck it up and realize that kneeling is not that big of a damn deal. 
It's not. It's not that big but, of a deal. It's not, You're it's, not out there burning the damn flag. If they were out there literally disrespecting something in the form that it's so beyond the links that it's like, okay, this is too it's much. Not about, it's not about the American people. It's about the money. That's it's true. It's about the money that the league makes. Right. It's, but the reason is because the American people got a, upset about what they were they, doing. They, and they, they took the money a, away because the right. viewership went down because of this large, incident. large portion right. of the viewing audience for the the NFL. I is, honestly is don't think very, it's going to change. Is the I very don't am- think it's going to American, change. American, patriotic, military type people that are very much fans of the NFL. And, and I would and, whoop and, all of their asses at fantasy football. <laughs> that is a that is a power play for for this move that they just made to get those people reinvolved so they can make more money, make the same amount of money, and 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 make those fans happy. Make those fans happy because you know what? What what are they going to do? For, for racial inequality in the NFL, what, what what would they do? What do you think they could do to instead of? I don't think it's the I don't think it's the fans or the the players speaking out of racial inequality in the NFL. It's just in the country. You think I, that they should be maybe allowed to uh, represent an issue? Um, I think they should on just their jersey on their. No, on their that's attire. too much. But I just think that if they decide that they want to kneel. Just let them kneel. I don't care. I just don't. I don't give a shit. Like yeah. I don't. It's it's the same problem that i have that we were talking about last week right with whenever you go in there and you see an issue instead of trying to see both sides of it right they saw what side they wanted to see which was the money which was the viewership which was the the tv ratings and all this and that right um instead of seeing like what there actually is the problem why are they making these issues that's because it's a bigger deal like it's a bigger deal racial inequality is a thing some that is yeah. a, that is a thing like um i'm not saying that that you know that it overpowers you know patriotism or whatever the case is right. but if their issue they just basically just swept that issue and their free speech and their freedom of thought underneath the rug for all of what we were talking the about money. with the money yeah. and the viewership no, no, i agree i agree and 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 i think that that's where i have the issue like i said i definitely agree i'm just asking the question cuz i like to you the, you have to think outside of your yourself because you're not it's it's not your opinion that they're trying to change it's the the american people that no i see it i see patriotic people that's that's the reason that's the first thing i thought of i was like wow this is just to get back the pure americana people that aren't watching because viewership in the nfl was down a lot last year yeah a lot last year um and a a big reason is because of this issue and is because of, of of what came up about all of this and because of you know the people that that get butthurt about somebody just freedom of speech like they're just they're allowed yep. to speak their minds and this is the way they choose are you telling me that they're the first people that colin kaepernick's the first person to ever do this i highly doubt no, it no no highly doubt it no, you want to no, know no. why the media was all about on him and yeah. all on all these players because that's how media is these days yeah they focus it in you hear about it somewhere else you make your assumptions on what right. the case is they blow it into some big deal and this is where we get out of it right it's the media right. i really think it's 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 a huge problem with the media because in my honest opinion, like you said, I could give a shit if they stand, if they kneel, if they do jumping jacks. I don't give a shit if they're not if they're burning the flag. Yeah, that's a problem. If they're like literally sitting there with like a guy in an America shirt, like hanging off the side of the balcony, yeah, that's probably a problem. They're kneeling down. At least they're like they're not. They could be doing something way dramatically worse yeah. that nobody's even thought about. Right. They could be doing you know outlandish things. It's not outlandish to me to just kneel and stand there, like, or just to just kneel there. Like, I just don't. I don't know. I just think it's a lot of people butt hurt on both sides. Honestly, yeah, yeah. It, it I, really and I, is. I would agree. I, I would definitely say that uh, it's it's not that important to me. It is important to a lot of people. Right. Um, I think that uh, when you're a part of a, a specific side or you you agree with a certain thing, um, and you're very passionate about that thing. Um, you know, uh, sometimes it gets taken the wrong way. Uh, sometimes, you, if you don't do the research on the things that you're, you know, that you have an issue with, um, you know, maybe you misunderstand what's happening. My thing, uh, my big, and we'll close it out and get to the next topic after this. Um, my thing is, they shouldn't have made this rule. Just in general, yeah. I feel like they should have contacted the people that show their product. That contacted, you know, the Foxes, the CBSs, the NBCs, the ESPNs, all of those different outlets, and say, let's get together and stop putting cameras on this. Let them be able to speak their mind, whatever. Because now, now, it's going to be a bigger problem. I really feel like it's going I don't to think be. So. I really feel like people are going to try. I feel like people. I think they're going to. They're going to feel like it. they're going to they feel like they are being even more, um, you know, 
against the the feeling of being against because now you can't even do that. You can stay back there or you can come out here and do what I told you to do. And now they're going to get on the field and you're going to score a touchdown and some shit's going to happen. Like, I just feel like it's, it's just inevitable that they're going to speak their minds because there are a lot of those players in the NFL um, that... Is it worth losing their job, though? Or is it worth picking find a lot of money? Yeah. You think so? Mm-hmm. For some players? Yeah. I, I would agree. How for much some money do they get paid? It's ridiculous. Yeah, like, that's true. $10,000 is like wiping their ass. Yeah. Like, literally. I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like something like that, because they they won't, they won't know they can't get fired over it. I mean, unless they get, I mean, literally, like I said, unless they do something that's like super drastic. Super drastic. Well, but something as simple as, you know, doing some more whatever, like, you know, some like T.O. crap like he used to do back yeah. in the day that was just like, hey, pay attention to this right. type of deal because you told me I can't do this. I'm going to go out and do this. Right. Well, only time will tell when the yeah. season starts. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe we'll revisit this and we'll, we'll talk I'll about it. I'll just be paying attention to fantasy. It's true. And it's me all. winning again. Okay. Well, uh, must be nice to not have any injuries. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So on to the next, would you like to next one? one? Yay. Let's get lighthearted here, guys. Um, we're going to do our first uh, movie review. Um, we have never done one of these, so be patient with us. Uh, might be a little clunky. We might have to, get through our little memory box because we saw this um on separate occasions um we did not go together to see this i went with my wife and my dad um and you went with your brother and yeah, your girlfriend, girlfriend yeah um we're gonna be talking about deadpool 2 um went and saw this i saw this last thursday you saw it on what saturday sunday sunday okay um definitely looking forward to this one um the first deadpool i was a huge fan of i was waiting for a a true to the comic um, you know, realization of Deadpool into movie form. And the first one was just exactly what we ordered up. Um, Ryan Reynolds is literally born to play this character. Yeah, there's nobody um, else. That can nobody that. else can, can even touch him when it comes to portraying this character. Cause it is spot on. Um, definitely love the first one a lot. Um, in my opinion, I actually like this, this second one more. Um, it, to me, it just fully flushed out everything else that you got with, with the first one. It was a lot of a little bit of origin story. Mm -hmm. Um, you got into the big bad, um, you know, having, having the villain in there and then you had, um, you know, the kind of big old, you know, comic book type ending with everything happening at that big, um, like shipyard or whatever that happened there. Um, and then this one, you kind of got to have a little bit more layered things to it. Um, the comedic parts were all still there in this one. Um, this, oh my God, I'll go back to it every time. That scene, whenever they were jumping out of that plane, I swear to God, I was dead. Uh, we also need to mention there's going to be spoilers ahead here too. So we want to make sure if you guys have not seen Deadpool yet, um, just go ahead and zip through this part. When you guys go back and watch it, you can come back and watch a review of it. Um, so we do want to flash up a big spoiler for you guys uh, because we will be talking about a bunch of different stuff. Um that was definitely, I think, a highlight of the movie for me. That that scene was freaking hilarious. When you go out there and they had all this like ragtag trio or did like people out here and they're just like dying in the most like ridiculous <laughs> forms and fashions you could possibly do. Um, but one thing to me that, um, well, a couple things. Um, I felt like the the relevance to the comics were even more um, they did follow nailed the comic story really on well. this one than it was this, the first one. Um, and the ability for these Deadpool movies to go to the furthest end of ridiculousness to be able to tie it back to the emotional, um, you know, the emotional grounding of the relationship um, between him as a, him and his girlfriend. Yeah. I think that is that is a hard thing to do in this type of movie. A lot of movies are able to do it, but none to the extent of how raunchy these movies are. Right. To be able to go to the lengths of, you know, the fully ridiculousness of what, you know, he could possibly do sitting on a, a couch with baby legs with his dick dangling out and yeah. stuff like that and going up and like talking to Cable and, and like shaking his hand and stuff like that. To be able to have that to where, um, I can't think of his girlfriend's name. I feel so bad I should look uh, up the characters. Uh, Vanessa? That's he right. Called, he called her Ness, right? Yeah, I think it's Vanessa. You're right. Um, for whenever she dies, he wasn't able to protect her and wasn't able to save her in that scene, uh, which was really great. That scene whenever um, they came into the house or whatever, and he was like whooping to all ass, and he threw that knife, and he missed and shot her it and was killed a, her. It was a cream cheese spreader. Cream cheese spreader, you're right. Toss it into the door because they did the little flashback thing where he flicked the thing up and exploded all the, the, the canteens at the yeah. beginning of the movie, which was great. Uh, but to be able to connect the the raunchiness to the, the grounded emotional effect – of you know him needing to find the purpose of of you know what she wanted him to fulfill in his life still or whatever right. um to be able to you know tie back into you know 
with back with her because that was where his true grounding is, is, is the love that he has for her. Um, as uh, aside from all the ridiculous stuff that he loves to do. Um, but I thought that was, that was really, really well done as far as keeping that, um, to towing both of those lines was, was really well done. I thought. Yeah. Um, I thought this was great. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, entertainment wise, it was good. Um, storyline was very good. Yeah. Um, um, I wasn't as fully on board with the, the humor as much as I thought I would be. Um, I didn't laugh as much as I thought I was going to laugh. My only gripe would be um, some of the some of the humor. The timing was good for a lot of the, the jokes. Um, but I, I kind of felt like some of the stuff was a little hokey or a little cringy at times. Some of the jokes were a little cringy or just kind of like, I don't know, like, just I didn't feel that. Weirdly I don't know. I didn't positioned feel it. sometimes. Really? I didn't feel that. I don't know. Like, I mean, I get it. it's like Deadpool, and that's kind of like his his shtick. There were definitely good one liners in this. Oh, yeah. um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff involving like social justice stuff with like where he kept telling uh, Cable calling, <laughs> calling Cable a racist, and he was a racist old white man. He killed a guy in the cop that was like Black Tom or something. Yeah, like Black that. Tom. He's like, oh, it's like you racist Black. bastard, Cable. Yeah, and he just keeps making racist jokes about Cable, and I, I thought that was pretty. pretty <laughs> he funny. called Domino Black Black Widow. Yeah, Black Black Widow. <laughs> so good. Yeah, and then um, uh, he did the stuff with the their X Force. They're gender neutral, and uh, yeah. And uh, it's just, it's just, he, he had a lot of social justice uh, yeah. esque style jokes, and I, I found those very clever. Um, some of the, some of the stuff uh, where, where like the jokes were, um, maybe, I don't know, I don't want to say the timing was wrong because I feel like the timing was good for a lot of the jokes. Um, they just. Some of the jokes just weren't funny to me. To me, some of the jokes just weren't funny, and whenever I heard them, I just I, instead of like chuckling or laughing, I just was like, or I was just almost cringy a little. Really? Yeah. I yeah. literally didn't get one sense of that. I don't really? know. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I will back, say watch and see. We'll the, watch the most I did laugh was the was the airplane Jesus. scene. Jesus, so funny. that's that scene was that very scene good. was good. Also, the um, the <laughs> the scene every time he messes with um, oh God, what's his name? Uh, when he was in the mansion and was going around oh, in, yeah, when he was going around on Professor X's wheelchair, yeah. <laughs> she was so good. And then they turned and they had he's like, we couldn't even get any more of the X Men here. And they turned and had all of like yeah. the the newer X Men and everything yeah. like that in the little corner or whatever. Uh, I thought it was so awesome they had Juggernaut. How freaking cool was that, man? That was so yeah. cool that they had Juggernaut in there, getting to have like a an OG X Men guy in there. Um, I'm a huge fan of the X Men movies and stuff like that, so it's yeah. cool to see um, to be able to see that in there. Um, What's your thought on the kid? Was it fire, fire hands, fire? Um, I can't that actually, the name. fire fist. Fire fist. That's it. Yeah, he's like they just kept laughing at his yeah. name. It's like fire they fist. just kept laughing at his name. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, they. I felt like they could have casted the kid better. Yeah, I do too. I feel like they could have probably found a better. I kid thought to that play too. It, I wasn't a fan of how how because yeah, I guess he's from like he's from. New Zealand. I don't know if that's just I, that I'm. That's a deep cut on the comic, so I don't know if that's like the, the comic book character is actually from that too. But yeah, I thought they. I don't know. I felt like they just made him. Like got a heavier set kid to do it just so they could kind of poke fun at him being fat, like that, or just be like a superhero can be a fat guy because he, he did make jokes. He he. The thing I like about Deadpool and the movies in general is they're not politically correct. No, and and like I love the fact that they can just jump from making fun of fat people to making fun of right. races, having racist jokes and gender jokes, and then yep. and then gay jokes and just like and just doing it just it, and it's acceptable because the deadpool character is like that and yep. that and that works um yeah and, and that to me i thought that was good i will say however um so i didn't think it was the the funniest obviously but i think it was in terms of like a superhero storyline was one of the best ever really? in a movie yeah i think the idea of spoiler alert because we'll because we have you know, obviously going to talk about this <laughs> part but um how you know he he loses his girlfriend then uh he keeps having to die to 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 speak to her and then each time he speaks to her he has a he has a, an, a somewhat of like an ego death which is interesting because you know a lot of times when people have near death experiences or something they they see something and they're like oh shit like this is something i need to take care of this right. is something i need to deal with and he just keeps killing himself and he keeps finding out like 
your heart's not in the right place. Then he goes, ends up accidentally at the X-Men house, and then he's like, you need to be here so your heart will grow. And then he's like, oh, I have an epiphany. I have to be here. Even though he's kind of a shithead, he's trying to figure things out. Then, you know, he dies again. And you're going to be an X-Man trainee. Trainee. Whatever. You're going to be an X-Man trainee. <laughs> he always says X-Man. He's, I'm here with the X-Man. <laughs> I'm here with the X-Man. Uh, <laughs> trainee. Yeah, he's like, we're here. I want to find that jersey so bad. It's right. so funny. Uh, and then he dies again. Um, and, uh, the, you know, his girlfriend says, um, you know, kids give us a chance to restart over. And then he's like, oh, my God, it's the kid. It's the right. kid. So then he goes and he tries to protect the kid. And then, um, you know, he does that whole thing, and then he gets his heart in the right place, and then towards the end when he dies again, um, he talks to her, and she's like, you know, every, you've done this right, but it's not your time, or time will come. And then, you know, Cable goes back in time and, and puts the, the token in his thing, which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a really good uh, finish to that. Yeah. And, and, and in terms of a story and building a, building highs and lows emotionally with enough humor, um, I, I think it's one of the best superheroes. Yeah, I, th- I really. Thought- I think it's one of the best superhero movies of all time because it, it capitalized on the right amount of humor, the right amount of motion, the right amount of action. The, uh, I mean, for us, we're older. You know, we like the 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 raunchy humor and stuff, and maybe right. some of the younger the younger people might not feel the same way. But you when will. he when he says it's a family movie in the beginning. It really is a family. Turns out movie. to be that way. It turns out to be like yep. a family movie. So yeah, and that also leads into they're going to be making an X Force movie as well. So right. ties into that, all of that stuff. Um, speaking of Cable, I loved, uh, dude, Josh Brolin, man. He's like just all about it, man. It's so funny whenever he got to go like, okay, shut up, Thanos. Whenever yeah. he said oh, that, yeah. it was so good. Yeah, be able to throw good. that in there. There's a lot of jabs at DC too, and they come talking about like, oh god, you're so dark and gritty. Are you sure you're not from the DC universe? And oh, then we throw one of the cringy jokes. The cringy jokes was the. Was when they kept making references to dubstep. I just oh like, yeah. I was just like, oh, this joke yeah. is not funny. Yeah, they did that. They throw a couple uh, uh, Batman jokes talking about him, and uh, they made the joke like, about Batman you? versus Super. He's like, I'm Batman. He's like, I'm Batman. And they made the joke about uh, Martha, the the, oh, the mobs God, yeah. with Batman versus Superman. I was like, oh God, I just love that they could just shit on everything. Talking about at the very beginning, he's like, how dare you, Wolverine, go out there and kill yourself or whatever? Now I gotta kill myself. So they start the movie by killing yeah. himself or whatever. Was and that's what's little, so cool because yeah. Deadpool in the comics is just fine continually finds a ways die or ends up dying and comes back and does something weird or whatever so that's why i really like that um the how they involved package that was brilliant it was but they did like the james bond kind james of like Bondi, james bond had the like in production with yeah how did all this happened or who, yeah who, who killed directed her? by the guy who killed john wick's dog because yeah, the guy that yeah, directed yeah. john wick killed it oh, yeah that's funny it's so clever i mean it just it's the, the the different nuanced jokes that they throw in there the the connection with all of the the other the superhero movies because it's so breaking of the fourth wallish which is yeah they break the fourth so wall a lot. They so they much lot. you know deadpool you know talk. it's so you never see a movie where they talk about current films and stuff like that or things that are going on to that extent yeah. or, or things that are going on in pop culture to that extent in these Deadpool movies. They do right. such a good job with that. Um, Should we speak in detail about the, the plane scene? Because I feel like how... <laughs> the, it was so well set up because... Because they said multiple times the wind is bad. They did. They, they like, kept going to do the winds. It's not. It's not a good day. It says don't worry about it. The winds out because they talked to um, that uh, that guy. Cable had the guy and he's they like, talked. So to, he's like, just so you know, the wind's not the wind's not good today. Yeah. And uh, they kept going in there. They got all the different guys. Who's the guy that Peter. was just the Jupiter? They got him. Uh, Domino. I love Domino. I love that it's character. character. It's a good character. It's a really solid character. They made, that I think they is made really it good. That luck is a super. Power. I think that's cool. I thought that was really, in all the different things that happened to where she's like just kept making it out of things and she's things like, like that. Take the wheel. Yeah, and just all. Everything, everything worked happen. out for her. And then just all of those like B-rated uh, um, uh, characters Cruise. from, yeah. Terry Crews could um, uh, like manipulate uh, like radio f- waves. Yeah, something, something. like you could, he could like explode you in your head or something like yeah, that with the so radio Yeah, so he had waves. that power. Then you had a guy who spit acid. Yeah. And then you had Shatterstorm. I don't know what his special yeah. talents were. The Vanisher. <laughs> yeah, the Vanisher, who was literally <laughs> just like, is he here? invisible. All you saw was a backpack <laughs> jumping. <laughs> just a backpack floating <laughs> out of the... I'm Dude, like, uh, what? You just it's see so Peter funny. floating in his mustache flapping the wind, and then all of a sudden you just see a backpack floating in there. <laughs> it's just super... So good. And they but have, they set up that scene yeah. so hard. Like, they set it up like, all right, guys, we're the X-Force. We're the team. We're, we're, we're going to 
get this done. They're all and they hyped. all jump out and they were playing like Thunderstruck oh, by God. ACDC that whenever was, they jump good, out. Yeah. It's so good. And you totally don't even have it in your mind that they're all just going to get slaughtered. So they jump out and Deadpool even hits, he, he runs into like a sign or something like that. Yeah. Um, Terry Crews drops in the middle of a street and gets hit by hit a bus. Hit by a bus. Uh, one of them doesn't, one of them go into like a electrical. Shatterstorm, or, goes, Shatterstorm goes into a helicopter and gets A helicopter, that's what it was. Uh, and then Vanisher ends up being Brad Pitt. Yeah, Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad Pitt shows up and then he like runs electrocuted into, electrocuted into a thing. And then the, <laughs> it's like, the, what? The uh, Peter. Jack Geist guy, who, he he g- falls into a, slides right into a wood chipper. <laughs> and then Peter goes to try and save him and he's like starts throwing up. During, and the, during that whole time, Deadpool's just sitting there reacting to all these things. He's like, oh God, that's not good. Yeah. He's just reacting to all these different things. And then things. Peter gets thrown up on the acid and his yeah. body starts <laughs> melting. I'm just like, oh Jesus. It's just was like a continuation like over and over and over and over again. It's just so, yeah. yeah. It was really it well was done. So um, For the, sure. The ending. The ending with... Uh, so where he continued to try and die and he kept coming back and kept back and coming back. Yeah. Um, yeah. The very, I think the very end, like, I see the light. I see the light. Oh, oh no, just, no, no, it's, it's not. Just, it's just, it just the sun. It's just the sun. It's just the sun. I just love you guys so um, much. Also, it was a, um, another good comic back call is whenever, um, he came out and he got burnt up by, uh, what the fuck? I can't think of his name. Fire, firefly, fire. What the hell is his name? Fire fist. Yeah. Wherever they throw the fire and he blocked it or whatever and his suit turned all gray. Yeah. That's actually his suit from X Force. That's his X Force suit is actually gray instead of red and black. Oh. It's actually gray and black. So it's kind of a play on that. Cool. Um you had cool stuff with Juggernaut, Juggernaut just being a hard ass and all the stuff that they did have that mat or the match. <laughs> that uh the battle that he had with the Colossus and the, them just yeah. like, beating the shit good. out of each other. That like, was CGI pretty CGI fight scene coming. Yeah, <laughs> watch yeah. out. Yeah, that, that stuff is yeah. pretty good. But yeah, like we were saying, um like I was saying at the beginning, tying in the the humor with the emotion. Um, I think they did as farthest extent of the the humor and the raunchiness to be able to tie it with the furthest right. extent of emotion is very hard to do because you could literally go into there laughing your ass off and crying your ass off. Right. I could legitimately see somebody coming out that way. Best ending credit scene ever. Oh, man. Dude, that ending credit scene was brilliant. That It's going to be hard to top that. That one's pretty good. Off the top of my head, I can't really think of one that's as good as that because that one, dude, it was so good. Everything they did, just going into X-Men Origins and having the film footage to go in there and shoot the Deadpool that they made, which was just a total 180 of how Deadpool should be. They freaking sewn his mouth shut in the yeah. Origins movie. I'm like, what are they doing? Go in there and just shoot him in the head. Shoot, <laughs> be yeah. like, you're welcome. <laughs> and then go shoot into Ryan the, the Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds when you did the Green Lantern. He's like, you're welcome, Canada. Yeah. yeah. that's the, It was so good. When it they was had, good. Yeah, so the credit scene, they had uh, Negasonic Warhead. Or Teenage whatever, Warhead, yeah. Whatever her name is. They had her and her, I guess, girlfriend fix the time travel thing, and he goes back and fixes some stuff in the timeline so he goes right. back and saves, saves, his, his saves, girlfriend. saves his girlfriend with the cream cheese spreader yep. um, um, and then he goes, goes back to X-Men Origins X-Men Origins and kills, kills the version kills of the original Deadpool, Deadpool version from that movie yeah um, and then uh, the Green Lantern one didn't he do one more he did one more didn't he was it the three things I only remember the three. I think it was just the three. I think it was just the three. But yeah, it was brilliant. They just they cleaned up the. He's like cleaning up the timeline. It's clever. Just really clever. It's just it's just, yeah. It's just the, those movies. They just kind of surprise you with how clever they can be and how right. how um how they can tie those different the the different extents of the emotion and the, and the humor together. Right. Um. Now we have seen. Well, there's been three. Um. You know, big superhero comic book movies that have come out. Uh, you have Black Panther in, in February. Um, you had um, Avengers and you had Deadpool. Um, what is your ranking of those three as of current sitting before we have any more coming out? There's uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out soon. Um, I don't think, does Captain Marvel come out this year or does that come out? Uh, I think that's next year. I think it was 2019. Not, not um, sure, I can't think of any other ones that come up besides Ant-Man and, and, or, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. What are the other ones that are coming out soon? Um, We're failing you guys epically, but I, I know actually that thought, I actually thought the, the Avengers Infinity War was funnier than Deadpool. Really? Yeah, I actually think it's the. F- I actually thought it was, other than maybe Thor Ragnarok, was the funniest Marvel movie. I I, I laughed a lot actually during Infinity Wars, and I think I think it's was it jo- was did Josh Whedon video- do this one? Um, no, those were the. Are you talking about the Avengers movie? Yeah, the, uh, no, those are the Russo brothers. The Russo brothers. The Russo brothers, which have done, in my opinion, some of the best Marvel movies. My favorite Marvel movie, which is uh, Captain America: Civil War. They did that one, and they also did. Um, uh, oh my God, Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier. Um, which was fantastic. Um, but yeah, they did they did that one. Um, my order would be, um, Infinity War one, Deadpool two, Deadpool two two, 
and then and then Black Panther would be the order so far. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I would agree with that. That's how I would go with it. Um, but thoroughly enjoyed Deadpool two. It was a fun a fun go at the theater. I mean, sometimes you um, you go there and you kind of um, you know sit through. You don't get a lot of the different ranges of emotions, but they they tied a lot in there. They tied the humor in well. They tied the emotion in, the action in. Um, everything was there. I think the I think Avengers was situation was because. It, it, if you've been a fan and watched all the movies, it's the huge, it's a huge payoff to oh, yeah. the crazy finish. So oh, yeah. we're not even to the end of it either. Yeah, there's I mean, one th- more. There's still so, another one. So I mean, um, that's we're talking about Deadpool over here, but I know. you know, uh, it all ties together it eventually. All, t- yeah, all the all superhero movies. So I mean, um, I, I would say I like the Deadpool two movie better than the first one. Yeah, I, did I too. would say I think I thought the first one was funnier. I I, just, I don't know, man. I, I really thought this one was funny. I definitely thought it was funnier than Infinity War. I thought that Ragnarok. Um, was funnier than Infinity War, but I, there was some humorous parts. They like to throw the humor in there with all the action and stuff like that. There was some definitely good good parts through Infinity War that was that was definitely humorous for sure. But yeah, thoroughly enjoyed Deadpool. If you guys haven't got the chance um, to check it out, we just spoiled it all for you. <laughs> if you sat there and watched it all, but um, you could come back from the spoiler free zone or spoiler zone back into the spoiler free zone. Um, go check out Deadpool because it's some good stuff and support R rated comic book movies. Do that so we can get more of them. Logan was fantastic with the R rating. Finally see Wolverine just F people up, which was so awesome to be able to see yeah. that in an R rated um, Wolverine movie, which I've wanted so badly and they fully delivered with Logan and they continue to deliver with these Deadpool movies. So it's awesome to see. Um, and I want to see, continue to see more of that. Um, you know, be able to see like an R rated movie with like Joker in it. God, that'd be amazing. Possibility they try to do Deadpool versus Wolverine. <sighs> that would be huge. I, that would be huge. I honestly, it would, it, it, to me, it, I thought it always would have to happen. If they would have Deadpool, they have to have Wolverine. It's like they're tied together so, so well. But I feel like I hope it happens. I honestly, I don't know unless they recast Wolverine. I just don't see, I don't see Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine anymore. I feel mm-hmm. like, I feel like Logan was it for him. I really do. And it was, a, it was a great send off. If they keep it that way and they keep him the way that it is, I think in the storyline and, and the way they do things, unless they go back in time. Unless they do some sort of backtracking or whatever, which I could see them possibly doing to try and get the Wolverine or get Wolverine action back in there and stuff like that, but I'd love to see it if they if they would yeah. get it in there for sure. <laughs> okay, um, next up, we're going to be getting into um, a discussion that I have been so joyfully looking forward to. <laughs> um, we're getting into J Man's addiction here um, that has turned into an addiction brought to me by my partner Jarvis. Um, he had to mention this to me, and now it's taking over my life issues um issues very much so um we're going to be getting into some Fortnite discussion ladies and gents all the gamers out there peek your head up uh take your take your hands off the sticks put a little wall around you put some traps on the outside and just protect yourself up because <laughs> it's gonna have to get some heated discussion that going was on here lame as that fuck. was fully nerded out right <laughs> there so lame. fully nerded out uh go ahead and turtle up in your uh, one by one and let's uh, get to talking about some Fortnite, ladies and gents um so this game is taking over the entire. Drink your this, slurp juice first. Uh, yeah, I might have to. I need to anybody got any shields? Uh, <laughs> we uh, so, um, so Ryan, Mr. Jarvis over here, he got me into this game that is taking over the freaking world. Um, I would say, when did you, you and your brother, start playing this? Uh, probably towards the beginning of the year. Yeah, because I think uh, so. me and my dad got into it around. Like March, I want to say, like now, nah, probably like February or March. Um, we started into it. I, I continued to hear about this game. Um, I'm a big gamer. I love to play video games. Um, and you know, when there's a new one that comes out that that everybody's sparked interest in, I remember the same kind of feeling around when Rocket League came out. Um, Rocket League was hugely popular when it came out. I kind of fallen off with it. My dad still loves it, um, but I've kind of fallen off a little bit. Uh, but I heard about this game, and I was like, okay, it's a free game. You could download it. Um, there's no cost to play with it. They tie in, just wait, we'll get to that. Um, and they bait you. Um, it's a free game. Uh, it's, it's a battle Royale, which is a a new, uh, you know, game mode that is just sweeping the video game world. Um, the, the sense of the survival game, very hunger games, ish, um, you know, throwing in a whole crap ton of people. You go scavenge for supplies, scavenge for guns and ammo and all this and that. Um, and the last one remaining wins. Um, and I, I loved that the thought of that, um, when I first very ignorantly of myself, I said, it's free downloadable game. It's going to be some trashy little, you know, crappy graphic, 
you know, right. um, you know, very terrible gameplay, very lunky and clunky. Um, that's my thought on it because you know it's a free downloadable game and there's not going to be any money put into it and there's not going to be any effort put into it oh how wrong i was um but i'm trying to think of how we finally get into it i think one of the things is i started actually watching um a guy on youtube which is not the one that you're going to be thinking of um guy's actually name is toke um his name is um he has a channel called toke plays uh he plays a lot of madden games i watch his madden games and wish i could be as good as him on madden um but i watch a bunch of different content it's actually how i got into um the um i can't even think of the the mutt league um for madden and getting in and being like the kind of fantasy aspect of madden to be able to pick your own players right. and the card thing or whatever and i watched that and i was like okay i'm really into that so i ended up getting back into madden because i used to be all about madden kind of fell off and now i got back into that and then he started playing fortnite and i was like okay i'll just see what it's about and it just took me completely by surprise of how colorful how laid out this game was um how elaborate the the playing field was and how elaborate the the island that you play in on playing is um how much it it gets to you when you finally get in and start playing of how how it legitimately feels like your life is on the line like when i first started playing i was literally like just hiding in gas stations like i played shooter games my entire life and all of a sudden i'm just playing like a pussy (laughs) like i just start like just wanting to hide and want to survive and then you start to see the nuances of the game you start to see you know how important the building aspect is, how important getting the correct loot or how important it is to to pressure people at the certain situation, how it is to lay off in certain situations where my mentality when it came to first person shooters or any kind of shooters is, you know, the call of duty aspect to just go full balls out just shoot, for shoot, that shoot, 10 yeah. minutes. It's just a full blitz of everything. But the battle royale thing just completely opened up a new a new idea of how I can view, um, you know, video games and how really honestly the future of, of video gaming is starting to look yeah i agree i agree with uh definitely all of that another person introduced me to this game um right when it was just starting to get hot um i watched him play a little bit he kept saying it's free it's free just download it it's free um uh, i know my little brother is a big call of duty player um so i i had him download it um i downloaded it myself um, I'm not very good at first-person shooters, but uh, I loved playing this game. Yeah, um, I loved. Uh, I'm, I'm not really a big gamer. Period. Actually, um, I like playing with other people. Other people don't like playing with me because I'm not very good. <laughs> I like playing with you, man. We got some duo dubs. Yeah, we got a couple one. Dub, one dub. One. Whatever, it still counts. <laughs> it counts. Damn it. Uh, counts. But I mean, uh, the more it's kind of the situation where the more you play, the better you get. Obviously. Right. Um, but the more popular this game has gotten over over time. Um, the more intricacies, the things that they've added to it, the more skins, the more things you can do, um, and it stopped being about it stopped being about well, it's still about you know winning, but they started adding crazy stuff, you know, like jetpacks recently and and different things, the different that, emotes and the dances that right. you can get that are actually they had some kid that um, is a really big Fortnite fan, obviously, it's like some like ten year old kid or something like that, and he filmed himself making his own dances, like and was like apparently became like a viral sensation and they made one of the dances that he did in a dance into the game so now he has a dance it's like this 10 year old kid that they found or whatever and made it. it's so cool because y- your thought of video games back in the day was okay this video game's coming out you're gonna play it um you know then multiplayer starts coming out you're able to play it online the inclusion of a community mm-hmm. is so fully flushed out with these type of games right. um you get the feedback from the players you get the feedback from the the creators on what you know they're throwing out there what ideas they have um you have the social media posts from like epic that the creator of, of fortnite epic games of like the different things they're going to be doing um the the inclusion of like i was saying how that the kid did that but they have the you know the players say like hey you know different things could be changed about this to make it better they listen to them they you know they fully hear what they're saying and, and work towards fixing issues and things like that and that's great i think that's how video gaming and and the future of video gaming should be is the inclusion and making it a, a community experience instead of just go grabbing a copy from a store or something like that playing it until you get tired of it and there's nothing else different than what you grab because this game this game has changed dramatically it's been out for almost 10 years i think um and the the popularity obviously has gained over the last you know year or so um and to now it's become you know one of the biggest and most popular video games i would say of all time um into the point to where 
in such a short period of time, they have gained so many people into it because it's so people easy. People are just watching people play. I do it. Yeah. I literally wake up almost every single day. I jump on Twitch and I watch my favorite streamer. His name is Cypher PK. If anybody out there watches other streamers, watches other you know players of Fortnite or whatever, you might know him. A lot of people know the name Ninja. Um, he's a big you know video game player and, and the most popular Fortnite player. Uh, but I literally get up every single day, um, have a bowl of cereal, and I watch Cyphers get, like play the game. And you could watch these players that are better than you that sit there and get paid thousands and thousands of dollars, which is another huge thing. Talk about people that that stream video games and do it as a living, mm-hmm. which is insane and freaking so lucky of them to be able to do uh but to sit there and it's an experience man they have their their viewers of the games they have their followers their their subscribers that pay them to be able to just you don't even have to pay to watch them but they do it because they find them so entertaining and you find some really really good ones again my favorite he's hella entertaining he's hella he's amazing at the game and what's great is he helps other people out there you know get better at the game it's helped me get better at the game because that's one of the biggest thing is why i enjoy this game so much is I got in there and I sucked. Yeah. There are very few games where I grab a game and I suck right at the beginning of it because I've played some sort of fashion of whether it be a shooting game, whether it be you a sports game, I want to get better. That's yeah. how I felt with Rocket League, but I just kind of got tired of it. Um, I wanted to get better because I went in and I sucked. And I was like, oh, this is awesome because I suck at this game. I'm not saying I like kick-ass video games, but the, the normal type video games, you just jump in and you start playing and it's pretty self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. This, the inclusion of the Battle Royale sense of it, the the difference of how it is, it's not like a deathmatch type deal where you just get in and you have one objective and you go do it and you kind of work on getting better at like a Call of Duty or a Battleground or whatever, Battlefield, those type of games or whatever. I got in and I sucked because the whole building aspect. I, right. I've never had a game where I could sit there and build a fortress around me and use it as a fort. Like, I played shooting games. The right. shooting is different than this game, but I played it and I wasn't good and I've continued to progress and that's what makes me enjoy it so much because there are very few games where I can jump into and not catch on in like a day and, and be able to be like, okay, I'm pretty good at this game in literally a day because there's a lot of games that's out there. If there's a lot of you know gamers out there that play. It's easy for people to do that, but it's not... It's not as when it's not as challenging. It's not as fun, right? Because I want to have the challenge. Because then I know, okay, if I work at this, I could get better at it, and then I could see the progression of it. Because I like playing video games so much, it's it's a great feeling to be able to go in there and be like, I've gotten better than I was last week. I've gotten better than I was last month, or whatever the case is. And you continue to grow. And watching those players, watching you know my favorite streamer Cipher, you know, watch him play and him explain how to do different nuances of the game or whatever, and then use that in my and realize that it worked for me. I was like, that's that's a cool experience. So, um, all right. Yeah. So deep deep cuts, deep cuts, right? Deep here. cuts, bro. Uh, is the game uh, borderline dangerously addictive? Um, There's a lot of people. I, I actually heard something on the radio today. Yeah, that was um, a top NHL prospect that's getting ready. To, supposed, supposedly, he's going to get drafted. Uh, he's very good. Um, might not get drafted because he has an addiction to Fortnite. Wow. He can't. He stays up till hours four, five o'clock in the morning. I absolutely, playing. I absolutely do because this game, I would say, is possibly the most addicted to playing a game I probably have ever had. Yeah. I doubt there are very few games out there that I could sit and play for eight straight hours and literally just get up to take a piss every you know couple hours and sit back down and continue to play it than this game. Yeah. I honestly think what, that what do you think makes it so addictive? That. What do you think just is it the aspect of um it's the aspect of because it's not easy to win yeah um because you want to continue to get better it's be it's the sense of you want to be better than somebody else you know yeah. you want to get in there and you you see people be successful at it and you want to be as success it's a video game it doesn't really matter right. um, except for the people that make thousands of dollars at it which is insane um but there are those people out there too that think that it's you know it could be a pipe dream to some of them but they think that hey maybe i can i see this guy on 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 twitch or whatever so maybe i can do that so it's not it's not really you wouldn't say it's specifically the gameplay. You would say it's the the feeling of it's a combination. I think it's a combination. The, the gameplay because because like I said, the, I can jump into the characters and the, the yeah, design and everything. The, the, exactly the the nuances of it. The fact that it is free, but it ties you in because you're like you get start to get addicted to it and you want to have different stuff. And you're like, oh god, that skin's pretty dope. I want to get that. Let me throw ten bucks at it or whatever. Would you say so, it's easy to play though? Is it easy to play? Uh, Once you understand the controls. If you're a hardcore gamer, I would say that it is. It is not, 
I don't want to say it's easy to play, but I want to say the thought. It's like it's like Texas Hold'em. Yeah. It takes a minute to learn, but like a lifetime to master type of deal. Yeah. So it's easy to think like, okay, here is the concept. You get thrown onto this island. You go loot everything. You hit trees. You hit metal. You get guns. You get all this and that. Um, here are the controls to build things. Here are your guns. Get inside that circle. Kill people when you find them. It's an easy concept. It literally took me no time to explain that. But doing that is hella hard (laughs) like you know what i mean doing everything that i just said is a lot easier said than done yeah because i literally i can sit here and say well i could go on call duty right now and win like five straight games or i can go call duty and win like you know 20 or 30 games or something like that in the next three or four hours whatever the case is uh that's not going to happen on fortnite like that is not it literally it feel the first time that i won a game on fortnite I legit marked out. Yeah. <laughs> like the 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 marking out and the excitement sensation. My wife probably thought I was the biggest nerd of all time, but I don't know what it does, but yeah. it just takes over you because you realize that there's there was 99 legitimately real people in this yeah. game and I somehow made it out of everybody into that. I don't know. Sorry. It's I think it's a combination of the um luck, skill. Yep. Um and just uh yeah, I mean luck and skill I think is but as far as when I, what it when it comes to being the why it's so fun and why it's so entertaining is the sense that it isn't easy off the bat, the sense that it is um, legitimately exciting to actually win a game that really does not matter because it comes off as being difficult to win because it legitimately does. Like mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of wins in this game. I'm, I I would say I'm decent at it. Um, I definitely, everybody I think out there would have room to approve if you're a Fortnite player, if you play the game or whatever. Um, but it's the sense of, I want to get out there and get better than I was before. Right. Because it's just a sense of anything. You want to, you want to be better than you were the day before. You want to be better at this, or if you're playing guitar, you want to be better in the next month. Or if you're, you know, learning how to whatever, speak a language or a new language, you want to be, learn more things over time. It's, it's a sense in your, in your mind that you want to get better at something. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy off the bat because video games that are easy to me. I play for a couple hours and I literally never play it again because it's like I can do this every single day. It's easy. You know what I mean? Um, to where some people it might be difficult for that said game or something like that, but it's that it's not that sense with Fortnite. I just don't feel like that it is. Yeah. I, I would say the appeal, um, the appeal to it is, is, is I'm going to use a, uh, a reference that you might not understand, but I used to do. Um, uh, I used to play Magic the Gathering, the card game, mm-hmm. and – the, the sense of the game is is it's a combination of luck skill and um, interacting with other people yeah so like yep so the idea of it being uh, the 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 comparison being you know with magic you you sh- have a 60 card deck you shuffle the deck um, you don't know what's what you draw seven cards you don't know like you could have an explosive hand and you could win on turn three just because you drew well. Right. Or, you know, after turn three, after your hands are, you're, you're looking at your hands, then you have to, every turn you have to draw in and then you have to start learning how to play skillfully. So with Fortnite, you could land in the perfect spot, land at the, um, in the eye of the storm. You could land at the perfect place that has the best chest and the most chests. You can get scar a scar and a llama. You Sc- could get a scar fucking a llama in the ass, and you're yeah. just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you could get a gold weapon out of nowhere. You could be on the other side of the map and have 90% of the field kill themselves without you having to do anything. Right. And all you got to do is get the last kill, and you win. Yeah. Like So so there's, there's just the aspect of being, you could go out there and hard-ass it like my little brother. He sometimes thinks, I think he forgets the concept of the game is yeah. to survive. And, He'll get there. And not actually just... Just you go know, out there and team deathmatch everybody. Yeah, he he, <laughs> he he thinks he just needs to get as many kills as possible. When I'd be watching him play, I'd be like, "Why are you shooting that guy from so far away? Right. Just let him run away. Right. It's why are you picking a fight? There's no reason for you to kill that guy. Go the hell over here and loot this freaking house. Like, right. Right. What are you doing? Or you know, don't pick a fight with this these two this group this te- two two teams fighting each other. Like yeah. why are you doing that? Let them kill each other and right. then step in and then pick the bones. Like yep. So it's just. It's that's that would be the reason I like it because of the same reasons as I like playing magic is because it's the luck versus the skill luck and the skill and then being able to it's cool it's it's super cool to get a team of four people then you're all friends and 
you guys can shoot the shoot the breeze and yeah. be like, you got any shield potions? You got this? Yeah, you know, everyone's helping everyone. Yep. You're making sure you got your buddies back. You're making sure everyone's got this this you know this going that going. Um, so so the 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 concept of the game and how it works together um, is is what to me I think is addictive. I think it is the it is maybe the epitome of the realization of the ultimate multiplayer game. Yeah. Because multiplayer was such a huge deal when it first came out. I remember I thought it was so cool. I was like, I could play the same game with my dad or with my buddies or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Like we could play on the same thing online. Like that's crazy. We used to have to just, you know, play with play, you know, on some other thing like offline or whatever and be able to play. And that was fun until you start to realize like the evolution of gaming and how things are and, and how, fully immersed it is and like how you're talking about how uh you could literally get online or whatever watch people play and watch people play the game and i could sit there and literally watch them for hours they're playing a video game i never thought i could do that right. with this game i could do it because i'm learning things like i'm legitimately it's like watching an edu like an educational type thing um with your and, friends and with, enough, with that if you're friends with enough people on on playstation or xbox or whatever you're on you know um you you could legit spend a night eight hours one oh night with, with the same four, yeah. with the same four and it people. goes by in a breeze yeah the same four people you and three other people playing for eight hours just getting wins after wins and i think that's what, another thing that i want then also you could have a night where you play with you play with one group then you join another group then you join another group then you're talking to 20 or, 20 or 50 different right. people that you were friends with right and then you're friends with this guy and this guy's friends with somebody you don't know yeah. and then you you're like oh i like playing with you let me get your your tag gamer tag yeah then you you know and you meet people it's it's interacting that way yeah so that 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 that's cool to me because you get to know people and another thing i want to mention one of the big things with me is how fast I can be if I'm not if I didn't do good at a game or if I didn't do that how fast I can get into the next one. Yeah. Fortnite you're literally in the next game in like 30 seconds. Yeah. So if you die or whatever and you get back in the loading screen, you're back in the little loading dock or whatever and you're back jumping back into the, another one. So it's just continuation over and over and over and over again instead of like where you're sitting in a lobby of Call of Duty or something like that where it takes a little bit to do. Um another thing I wanted to mention Speaking of the streamers and things like that, um, Epic Games, which is a huge announcement that just came out, is throwing a hundred million dollars um, into this game in the next year, as far as prize pools um, and things that that um, can be won um, in competitive Fortnite games. Um, that is a huge deal. That is a lot of money um, being thrown into this game, and it just shows the amount of people playing this game um, and supporting this game, which is great to see. Um, it, you know, it goes. It, all these games are going to be competitive um, with like uh, Twitch streamers and and YouTube players and things like that. Um, I have watched some of these tournaments, and and the level of play is insane. Um, and and some people on their off days, I wish I could be on my amazing days, um, but. It's really, really cool to see how much the the um, the creators and everything are supporting the people that play this game. They realize, you know, how much people are into this game and how much they're thrown into it is really, really cool um, to see that. Another thing I wanted to mention um, is something that we both talked about um, was the, the honestly before this the biggest video gaming name. Um, when it came to uh, a series, is definitely Call of Duty. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. That is true. Oh, shit, that is wrong. true. It, um, Damn it. It's not 1998 anymore, bro. It's all good though. Um, all right. It's classic back in the day, bro. Kickflip, McFlurry, 590. Uh, tail grind. Dark slide. Dark. Dark side. Dark slide. <laughs> McTwist. Um, is uh, is Call of Duty? Obviously, it's the number one shooting game of all time, um, and now they're realizing and they're trying to ride the coattails of one little Fortnite um, who's blowing up the world here. And now they are saying in their newest um, edition, I believe it's going to be Black Ops 4, uh, which I watched a trailer of. We get Call of Duty every single year. Me and my dad play it like religiously for like three or four months. And then it's like we lost it. <laughs> it's all of a sudden it's like, where did that game go that we played like every single day? Um, that's how it's been with Fortnite lately is every single freaking day. It seems like we're playing the damn game. Um but they said that Call of Duty is going to be coming out with their own version of a Battle Royale. 
um, being able to throw in a whole bunch of people. I don't know how, obviously it's not going to involve like the, the building aspects and the different nuanced things of, of Fortnite. It's but Battle Royale their own way. It's Battle Royale, the Call of Duty way. Um, Call of Duty, in my eyes, has the, the best uh, shooting gameplay of any game that I've ever seen in my life. Um, it is so, every time I shoot a gun in that damn game, I legitimately feel like I'm shooting a gun. Um, I love Call of Duty's gameplay. I love the way that it, it just, every time I feel like I'm riding a bike when I play that game. doesn't matter what type it is, what what who the creator is, whether it's Treyarch or whoever it is. Um, I jump into Call of Duty and I'm on. It's like I feel like I'm home. It's like, oh, okay, there we go. Now, now I'm now I'm good to go. Um, so I'm in. I'm hella interested. Um, I've been a huge Call of Duty fan for a long time, a, a player of Call of Duty for years. Um, so I'm intrigued to see how that is going to go with the battle royale aspect because I love battle royale games now. Like now that I see. Um, you know, well, I love the Battle Royale concept. I can't say games because I want to play one of them. Have you ever um, played PUBG yet? I have not. Um, I've seen people play PUBG, and um, I don't know, man. I just, I, I love... Too industrial. Uh, I don't know if it's that or if it's just that I don't, I have one that I'm already on. I don't want to just start on another one. Like, I'd rather just get good at this one. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, there's a ton that are coming out now. I think there's, oh, damn it, something Heights is a new one, and I can't think of the damn name of it. Um, but some of the bigger Fortnite streamers and stuff like that have played that, and they said it just was trash, but um, they could flush it out in, in, in years to come. Um, but yeah, um, I, I'm interested to see how the Battle Royale for, for Call of Duty goes and things like that. That should be that should be interesting to see. Call of Duty always comes out um, every November, I believe. Um, but yeah, until then, I haven't gotten off of Fortnite. I literally haven't played any other game. Um, it's, it's literally been Fortnite. It's been the grind to try and, you know, the, anytime you get into a game, it, it has some sort of, um, it has some sort of, like leveling up type deal or something like that, where you just continue to want to like grow and like gain more objectives or more XP or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm on that grind now. That's what it is. It just comes to like one game where I'm just on it and I'm like, okay, this is the one that I'm going to be, that I'm going to be sticking with for a long time. And, and uh, I'm definitely on that for sure right now. Um, I play on occasion cause I suck. Well, you also don't have internet access all the time, which sucks as well for me. Cause I can't play yeah. with my buddy. Can't I have play internet, with, I have internet can't play with new right kid now. confusion. You're right. I like to play though; it's fun. I yeah. just don't take it as serious. I like to have fun play. Yeah, it's true. Um, well, yeah, I guess this. Um, I don't think there's anything else that we need to flush out of that one. I feel like I got my nerd them out for you guys. Um, well, this will wrap up our um, our uh, weekly show here for the Dead Pulse Theory. Um, be sure if you guys. Um, Guys, make sure to uh, put comments down there if you guys are talking about anything. I know we had a <laughs> guy that went on a tantrum last week. Uh, that's cool. Whatever. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions, which is what we threw out. Apparently, he didn't feel that way. Just um, so you know, we are 95% opinion-based. Exactly. We, we're Very just much spitting so. our opinion. We're, that's it. I, we're not going to sit here and look up facts. I'm totally a We fact, could have sat here the totally entire time. a fact person and a rationality and reason type of person. Like, yeah. I've become that, and I want to know the facts about things, but... A lot of the stuff we're gonna say, a lot of the stuff we're gonna say, is very opinion based. Yeah, that's why theories are opinions, and and those opinions could be right or they could be wrong. You never know, Um, but they are opinions. Most of our theories are bullshit. Wrong. Yeah, probably are. (laughs) They're dead, bro. They're dead. (laughs) Pulse theories. Um, But yeah, if you guys have any um, things you guys want to say about the topics that we talked about today, um, leave your comments down there. We'll be sure to check those out. Um, If you guys have any questions or anything that you guys want to see from us, maybe any different topics you want us to to jump onto or want us to talk about. Um, let us know. Um, if you guys are first time viewers, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we put new videos out every Wednesday, pretty much. Um, it's, it's a weekly deal. So we find three topics. We literally discuss about it and we, and we get them out there for you guys. Um, so if you guys have anything you want to hear us hear from us, um, let us know. And I'm sure we could probably tackle it for you guys. Um, but until next time, uh, this will now wrap up this edition of the dead Pulse theory for my partner Jarvis. I am J man, and we'll see you guys next week.